This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hello friends. Today again I am revisiting the subject of uh, intermittent cataracts and they continue to pose challenges and just like to share a few of my thoughts regarding this. I usually would like to divide these swollen intermittent cataracts into two groups. The first group uh, being the one where we have these obvious pockets of uh, fluid cortex in between the lens fibers and these are the pockets which we try to aspirate with the needle uh, and in these groups whenever we puncture the anticapsule there always will be aggress of some liquid cortex uh, which provides immediate passive decompression and these uh, subgroup of lenses don't run a high risk of radial extension on the contrary uh, we also have a second group of intermittent lenses in which we find that the entire lens fibers themselves are swollen and we don't find any obvious pockets of liquid cortex which can be aspirated quite easily and when we puncture these capsules nothing comes out actually there's no aggress of any amount of fluid even during tearing uh, and uh, that's the reason why in these uh, subvariant of the intermittent cataracts it's quite difficult to aspirate any cortex with a needle uh, as the consistency of the cortex is more jelly like and these have a higher risk of the rexis running away during surgery i think we can identify the group depending upon the way the lens behaves as far as we puncture the capsule so today we are having uh, this eye which has got a very shallow anterior chamber as is evidenced by the a scan biometer and clinically it does not appear to have any liquid cortex and the cortex is more like a jelly my strategy is to perform a two-stage uh, rexus so after staining the anticapsule i stabilize the globe with an aspiration cannula and make my posterior limbal 2.8 millimeter incision I'm using sodium hyaluronate 1.4%. Uh, in this case, the best instrument, however, would be a micro forceps, which would ensure that we have minimal loss of the antechamber when used to the side port. However, in this case, I'm using Dr. Haldi Porker's uh, capsurexis forceps to the main incision. Important point to note here is that the elbow of the forceps is always lifted up and pressing against the roof of the incision so that the OVD does not escape. Antichamber depth is maintained, which is the most critical factor as we are all aware. I need to remind myself that even during the primary rexus creation, the capsule has the potential to run peripheral. So there are certain modifications which I do in such scenarios. So as I puncture the capsule, I don't make any attempt to lift or evert and fold it as we do it in our regular cases. As I puncture the capsule, I'm keeping the flap flat, not everted, and tearing it in a centripetal manner. I'm not making any attempt to fold it. The tearing of the capsule is done in short spans. Still, we can see that it has great tendency to be uncontrolled and run away. Eventually, the primary mini rexus is completed and I have a small 2 to 3 mm rexus. So let's just revisit the principles again. The capsule is always kept flat, never attempted to be everted or folded. And the tearing is done in short span. We grasp it, leave it, re-grasp it and always the pull is centripetal. Even after the completion of the rexus, it is to be noted that uh, no cortex has escaped out of the bag, suggesting the absence of any uh, fluid pockets of cortex as I was uh, suspecting. So now we need to uh, decompress the bag and it's possible for the rexus to get torn even during decompression as well. So I need to be a little careful here. 
as I'm trying to aspirate the cortex, I'm careful that I don't put any stress on the flimsy rexus margin. I have instances where it has just torn away even during this step. So once the cotton of the bag is empty of cortex, I use a direct irrigation method to wash some of the cortex and the care is taken to press the floor of the incision so that there is no build up of pressure in the anterior chamber and in the capsular bag. Now the remaining cortex from the other side is aspirated out. So finally the cortex both in front and behind the lens is aspirated out. And now is the time to enlarge the rexus. I am injecting OVD in the periphery of the chamber and minimizing the chance of the bag being inflated by the OVD. Using micro scissors a tangential cut is made followed by tearing the flap with the forceps. So now we have a central 5mm axis. Once the bag is empty, the capsule behaves in a very predictable and controlled manner. Now moving on to the management of the nucleus. I am using vertical chop uh, technique. I bury the tip until the whole length of it gets into the substance of the nucleus. Then the chopper goes down and then laterally. I realize the nucleus is much denser than what I expected. The first chop has not resulted in separation of the entire nucleus and only the distal half of the nucleus is separated. But that's fine. I rotate it and the first hemisection is then vertically chopped. And the lateral separation needs to be repeated at subsequent lower depths so that a final separation of the first fragment can be achieved. This process of burying, chopping and then lateral separation at progressively deeper planes is carried out for each fragment. Similar process is repeated until I have got six fragments from this nucleus. Once it is done, each of these fragments is consumed at the plane of the anterior capsule of the iris. The cortex is then stripped here using the tangential motion of the aspiration cannula. Finally, it's time for the implantation of the lens. I'm using a hydrophilic lens in this case and it is being implanted into the bag using the hydro implantation technique wherein the irrigation maintains the uh, antechamber in the bag and the lens is gently implanted into the bag. That's it, the case is done and hope this video was helpful and thank you for your time.